This conference will now be recorded. Yeah, so many people, if you are a new V in Linux, many people get confused with the CH mode. Though you can understand this one through Google also, but I, I can save some time there because all other commands in Linux are straightforward, but CH mode is little tricky to understand. So understand that there's a number system here in CH mode. Let me show you here. Uh, let's say uh, there is one files uh, touch. There's one I'm file creating Rajesh dot txt. Okay. Now this file which we have, and if we want to see the full permission of this file, uh, Rajesh dot txt. See here. Look at this very carefully. I hope the font style and all is okay, right? All of you. Yes, right? yes, yes. Yeah. So look at this here. <clears throat> here, this is the file name. This was created at this time by the this is the user of the file who is creating owner group. This is a group name. Vagrant is a group name. And here, some information about the timing and all. But this is important. Okay. This is important. Here, I copied. Now, what I want. This line, the first line is just deleted. It's just a formatting. Now three, sorry, three, three, three. Now this is the something which is a three section again. Now what does that mean here? So we need to understand. So first one represents the user, owner, owner of the file who created a file. Then any user who create a file, the first block represents the owner. Okay. Second block represent the group. Uh, group means this particular owner, this particular user is a part of some group, right? So that group. And third section represent others. That means not the user or not the user who is a part of this group, but other than that. So this have this, this have this, this have this. Now understanding this one is a little important for all of you. So you can troubleshoot a little bit later. So means user can do this. Any user who is a part of the group can do this and other people can do this. But the question is what is that? R means read, W means write and one thing which is not missing which is missing here and here that is called X, X means execute. So far, so clear, right? All of you. Hello. Yes, yes, sir. That's right. So that means if I read this correctly, this user has readable access to the file. The file was here, rajesh.txt. He can write a file also, but he is not having executable power. Group can read and write, no execute. Others can only read, not write, not execute. So now the question is, can we change the permission of this file? Okay, how can you change it? So I'll, I'll make it more simpler for you. Let's say this is the file on my desktop. Go to properties and here, see here attributes, read only, advanced options here you have, uh, security, see here. Modify, read and execute, read, write, all these things I'm talking about. Okay, in Windows, in Linux, same thing. So what to do now? So guys, each of these is having some weights. So the numeric words weight is R means four. Write means two. Execute means one. So if I see that the current number which I am having, this R means four and then two. 
here r means 4 and 2 here r means 4 that means if i combine this number 6 6 4 that means in short we say 644 4 access we have this is the default access for any file you created in the linux box are you understanding all of you all of you Yes, it's six six four, right? Six four six four four. That means six four four. So in that case, user have this access, this access is group, and this further. Now you want to change this permission. What to do? Uh, so let's say. Wouldn't it be six six four? Uh huh. It should be six six four, right? Not six four. Oh, oh sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. My 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 mistake here. Yeah. This should be six six four. Now let's say you want to change this permission. So what you want? Full permission I want to give to everyone. I want to give the, give the full permission to user also, full permission to the group also, and full permission. So what I'll do? Four, two, one. Four, two, one. Full permission. Here four one. So this will be the seven seven seven. Here also it will become a seven seven seven. Ah, oh, sorry, seven seven and for a group and this seven for others. Now, if you <coughs> you don't want to give any permission to others, what I'll do? <coughs> four to one all permission. You want to only give readable access, so four to read and write access not executable. If you want to give yourself as executable access, four to and no access nothing so zero so what will happen put two six plus seven so seven and plus six zero okay here if you want to give yourself as a full access but here you want to give not writable but only readable and executable access what will do four one here also four one okay so here seven Five, five. This is the ideal permission for for executing mode and all. You do that actually. Ch mode. So this is a number you have. How do I change this? Simple. Now if you understand that, ch mode means changing the permission. Seven five five. File name Rajesh dot th. Done. Now you understand that. What is the meaning of seven five five? All of you. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So this is the way you can change the permission. So files by default will not have a executable permissions. Executable permissions you have to give it. Seven five five. Now, if you want to change the ownership of this file. Then you can use the ch own command. So Similarly, it works for directories as well. A directory also, same. Yeah, same files and directory uh, is the same thing. Okay, so directory only one thing you have to do. This is a file, right? For if you see directory, this is the one, and all the files files of that directory. So you have to add ch mode hyphen r. R means r means recursive recursive yeah so now let's say you don't know that options let's say you don't know then what to do so you can run ch mode and man ch mode though you can google it will be faster and man means manual of ch mode so any any commands you'll have a manual in linux which you can read it though it's very tedious but this is what so these are the options you will out of which this is the option i try this now multiple options are available so uh, i don't want you to get lost in so many commands option because over the period of time you, if you keep practicing it you'll learn it so just one time you practice which i ask already which you want to practice so these are the commands you have to practice once and after that habit will make you remember all these commands so don't take uh, too seriously 
but also be serious to learn at least these commands i mean practice one one time okay so apart from that you know any situation you remember google will have uh, those commands immediately stay cool for now okay so now manual man you can use for the any commands okay so this is the one now next thing is changing the permissions oh, sorry changing the ownership so if you see that here who is the owner of it so ls ls hyphen lrt rajesh who is the owner of it vagrant why because you only created but let's say you want to change the ownership so i'm changing the ownership of this file ch1 who who's the name rajesh who's the group rajesh and file name rajesh.txt now this is a wrong thing here because you see that ch on rajesh user and group is not available so what do we do in this case so we add a user add rajesh okay now this command permission denied this means this user vagrant user cannot add users so either i become a root or add the sudo and i created now let me change the ch1 see here ch1 changing ownership of rajesh permission is not permitted so why is not permitted because you are not supposed to change this permission and add to the others one so what should i do so try to add sudo and you see here see here done i created one user rajesh okay so how do i log in so su su rajesh what is the password actually i created user but i did not set the password so what should i do so nothing i have to set the password wrong password i tried so what to do so first set the password how do i set the password sudo ess wd rajesh password for this rajesh 123 rajesh 123 set the password now su rajesh if i do rajesh 1 2 3 now you see i logged in as rajesh now see rajesh is added set the password now i want to do the sudo hyphen s means i want to become a root see here they are asking password for that so rajesh 1 2 3 see here look at this rajesh cannot become a sudo cannot become a root they say hey rajesh not is a part of the sudo or file this incident will be reported rajesh is not a part of the sudo or he cannot do the sudo but vagrant can do that how so the vagrant is added as part of the sudo or file rajesh is not added that's the reason he is not able to do in fact vagrant is added with the sudo or file without a password also that means he can become root without a password let me show you exit sudo hyphen s see become root from backend but if you do rajesh and here and if i do sudo hyphen s and password 123 oh this is a bad password i try rajesh 123 see so what to do so user you need to add in the sudo or list so for that what you need to do so come to the google ubuntu add user into sudo or list and thousands of article just open up one i typically trust stack overflow but it was not coming so here all this thing you have this is what i need and for that you have to add into this file there is a command line also you can add it this file you have to modify 
okay so how do you you can manually also edit this file but i don't want you to make a mistake so you can add this command so you have to become a root so su root password i don't want to know the for root no there is no password actually so i'll just exit ha here root and copy this command with sudo see this is the file you can manually also modify this file it's located is here actually. okay so i study this file go through this tutorial and see that what exactly you have to do but this file you have to remember that uh mind it here this file got open with a nano so this is the problem because default editor is set with a nano nano vi is the editor you need to learn actually so because it's set with a nano you can you can change this if you want to change with a vi editor and all you can change it here okay that is also you can do that so nano i am also not comfortable though i can write this file for no uh, for easy easy way all this instructions you have in the downside what to do but i am not comfortable and working i can modify this file as you wanted but i am not comfortable for the daily use so i'll not teach recommend you also so what to do i am going to use a vi editor so this is a command for vi editor and instead of nano which is default editor i am going to change the vi vi editor you have to learn this is a vi editor it's a editor okay so it's a read only mode and understand this file so here is sage look at this here here root here it says member of all admin group may gain root privileges that means they have said okay member admin a group name admin he will get all the privileges and no password required in fact here you see allow members of group sudo to execute any commands see here so member group means admin now you can go list to scroll also you can add one line here so you can do two things you can add the user rajesh into the admin group one thing you can do second thing you can add a user here and like this let me show you see here username rajesh all all whether you want no password then you have to specify no password and all like that if you want the password then just remove the password like this so multiple see here this is with the no password multiple patterns are there so you can this is the automation actually you can modify using echo command in this file itself okay so many ways are there to do that so easy way what i found out let's add this user into admin group so that information is done so what do we do so i want to list out the groups so actually this groups is uh, located here you can check this here here so here there is one group called admin okay somewhere will be there uh here it is so if i add that a user to the group rajesh to the group called admin i should be able to get this so here run this command run add user to group okay admin group so this is very simple command any tutorial you open and here this command you can use it because i am a root i don't need to have to use the sudo so here this is the command i am running as a root actually uh copy paste here username and group name so admin and group username is rajesh that's all i added rajesh is a part of the group called admin now i modify this user mod and rajesh is a part of admin group now now what i'll do i'll exit and i'll do su rajesh password rajesh 
Okay, so now I have logged in, and now sudo hyphen s uh, password is asking actually. Done. So yeah, this is the way you can get it done. Are you able to understand that, all of you? Yes, I have one question. Yeah. So uh, when the background user was the owner of the file. It was not able to change its ownership to Rajesh user without sudo. Is it something which is by default in Linux that we, even if we are the owner, no, 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 he, okay, yeah, yeah, good observation. No, he should be able to change the ownership. That was not the problem. But you know what? A group was not existed. Rajesh group was not there. I created a user called Rajesh, but group was not existed. So, so that user can so in the Linux group is created dynamically the moment you reference it, but the vagrant was not the uh, uh, I did not run that command with the sudo, so they will they were not able to create that group, but the moment I run with the sudo that group got created and permission got reassigned. Got it? Okay. So it was not sudo. Because it was not able to create the group. Ah, because group can create only by the sudo or in root. Okay, okay, understood, understood. I need charger. So that was a problem. So, but the command was correct, but the group was not exist. Okay, so this is how you can work. So sudo or list. Again, you have to get comfortable with it. Slowly, you will get into that. Don't get scared. All this stuff. Uh, let me tell you here. Once you get comfortable with the Linux, you will not touch Windows for anything, for sure, because it's so so time saving and so easy. You'll understand all this. Now I must teach you a little bit of troubleshooting skills also. Okay, what is a troubleshooting skills? So some of the things which I'm teaching you as part of the session, which uh, you may get, uh, you may get it from the internet also, but little hard way to get. Okay. But some commands and all you can get easily. So I'm not running the command which you can get easily because Linux is a huge actually. Okay, so most of the people they struggle with the troubleshooting, and that's a, one of the major area in DevOps which you have to build the skill set actually. Okay, so how do we troubleshoot? So I'll teach you the techniques, okay, and you have to practice it. These techniques. If you practice this over the period of time, then you will become a master in it. Okay, so how do we do the troubleshoot? So first thing, which many people I have felt actually because I've been working with many participants, so I felt like they they do not read the error message. That's the problem. First rule number one: read a error message. Five times. That's a rule number one. What people do? Simply they get error without reading. It, just copy the error, put it in Google, assuming that we'll have a some answer on stack overflow. That's true. You'll have a some answer on stack overflow, but your analysis skills will be dead. Remember that. You have to build that analysis skill, troubleshooting skills. So you have to read that error. It will not take more than two to three minutes of time to read that. Don't forget this one. Let me tell you, be serious about this uh, rule number one, because in DevOps, most of the work will be troubleshooting work. Integration required lots of troubleshooting. So I hope you will not forget that. So all of you understood that, right? Yes. Yes, Rajesh. Okay. Now, after reading the error, don't look for the Google first. I repeat, don't jump to the Google. Create a bracket for or category, say, let's say, category for error. What category you will create? That I'll teach you. So you read the error, and then you see that whether that error is falling under the system error. Okay, system error, application error, runtime error, 
और डिपेंडेंट सर्विसेस है डिपेंडेंट सर्विसेस है ओके व्हाट इज सिस्टम एर व्हाट इज सिस्टम एर सिस्टम एर मीन सिंपल थिंग गाइस सीपीयू रैम डिस्क नेटवर्क ओके दिस एरर विल बी कॉल्ड एज अ सिस्टम एरर सीपीयू आर लेस इट्स क्रैशिंग द सर्विसेस और एरर इज कमिंग रैम इज लेस सम टाइम आउट एरर यू विल गेट इट डिस्क इश्यूज विल हैव सम टाइम नेटवर्क इश्यूज विल हैव सम टाइम लाइक अ टीसीपी एरर यू विल सी दैट व्हेनेवर यू सी दैट टीसीपी दैट मींस नेटवर्क एरर एंड देन परमिशन एरर just now i discussed right permission this one sometime permission issues are there let's say there's a rajesh user is running some application and sometime what happen the rajesh is not having permission or the file is owned by someone else is rajesh is not able to access it file is owned by root rajesh is not able to start the services so permission error so categorize that Read this error five times and see that whether you have a CPU error, RAM error, disk issues, network permissions. Okay, and for each and everything, there's a few commands only. For example, I'm not teaching you a command right now, but ps ps have funny f all the services. Top free top. You'll get to know about this. Ping is a networking du. Hyphen sh, df hyphen k. So these are the commands which, anyways, I to ask you to go through this here somewhere here on top. You will go through that for sure. But are you understanding that? But you have to categorize that. Don't don't start looking for the command. Don't start running the command. Just categorize in your mind, saying that okay, I read this error. I feel that this error can be a system error. Don't run the command, but I'm just telling you. Are you understanding all of? You? Yes, Rajesh. Yes. Yeah. Application error means that application which you are trying to run. So application error means how do you find the application error? So first thing you should see service is running. That application is running or not. The second thing you see the logs of apps. Okay. Third things what you can see logs of system also if you should see now you say how do i see the system see logs of app is conditional question you have a one hundred apps and the location of the logs will be on hundred different locations so you will get to know you should see that service is running or not service is not running then then this could be the one issues logs have some error okay or not logs of the system have some error so I'll, I'll show you one simple real servers because I don't have a right now dummy servers. So let me access one of the simple production server. This I'm accessing the production server. Okay. Now I want to see the logs of applications. I'm I'm having very bad habit to work as a root. I must tell you it's a worse habit. But I, unfortunately, this is uh, something which people have to accept me for that. Uh, because i am getting uh, used to working with root only so here i'll go and first check the logs so how do i check that log so this uh, let's say i'm checking the logs i know that all this stuff so that's the reason i'm checking the logs of applications so here applications let's say what is applications uh, logs directly yeah. so here you have a multiple logs you can see that here okay uh, sorry Here I have multiple logs. I want to see that these are the applications log, access log. Someone is accessing my website, so this is the access log. Tell hyphen v is live log. I am seeing this. Okay. Now see this. Too many logs is coming. So how do I know an error message is there? Or not? So there is an error log also there. Or you can also filter the error from that log also. Grep error hyphen i like this. So now, whenever the error will come, I will see that right now it has not come. See, one error has come, but this not an error. I would say it's a HTML page actually. So yeah, 
so error will have something like that here okay so here there's one file error log you can see that also here these all errors you see ssl error auto index error code error these all are error in my applications it's a pretty huge file actually for error so what i do keep typically when i troubleshoot i delete all the files restart the services fresh log get created and then i see the error that's my approach to do that so yes this is the logs of the apps logs of the system where do you see so most of the linux machines uh, logs are located here these are the logs so many logs are there so here this is the apt logs you have here you have a uh, some supervisor logs its application system logs okay and message there's one file message message where is the message can you locate it m last log message is not there in my system not sure why message files should be there in okay so different different logs are there how do i search now let's say if you are searching for some specific log and you are not able to locate the file just like me so what to do so in this case grep recursive hyphen i ignore error error and after that you see there are so many logs i mean my god so many i will delete so not required actually i can delete this log source okay now i'll do the more filtering filtering with cpu grep cpu did we get any time cpu error no memory i'm just teaching you that you have to think in mind okay no memory do we get a tcp error no like that so this is a way you can search so this is a directory which is storing all the logs var logs okay remember that these are so you should check logs? this system logs yes var logs is having system logs okay. okay so here i'll write it var logs system logs in linux all the linux level you have a logs in this one application log is specific to the application service and all stuff like that now there is a one more utility which we have actually it's called general journal commands you might see this one actually while working the services primarily journal ct so i will just share with you this url you can study this so general is a way to troubleshoot one services actually nowadays it's very effective for doing that okay so now you decide you first read the error five times after that look at the system errors and categorize that errors whether it's a system or application and run time run time means what run time means is it java issue java heap issues or python issues or tomcat issues is the run time okay application is issue is issue and apache issue and then that means what i'm trying to say this application where you run you should check the run time issues for example here i showed you the one where is the server man huh. so here whatever the logs i showed you last time cd uh, cd opt lamp logs this is the run time error actually i showed you so then you will say rajesh where is the application logs so you you have to go digital bit deep drive and that is like uh, opt lamp st docs devops school and and some microservices uh, just tell me some microservices ms trainers oh, yo, it's not finding ha huh. uh, where is that ds not ms ds my bad so ds trainer microservices and here storage and here you have logs so here in this this is the application logs this is the applications logs which you have laravel.log see here 
So now you need to find out where is the application log. So you, while troubleshooting, you should be strong in that. But create a memory uh, pattern in memory. Like okay, I need to look for the logs of application, logs for the system, logs for the services, and so on. And then finally, Apache runtime logs, I mean Java logs, Python logs, Tomcat log, IS log, Apache logs. Look at this heap issues, this issue, that issue. Look at the log files of it. Okay, look at the log file of it. Are you understanding all of it? Permission issues you will see. Version issues you will see. Uh, uh, version version issue means you are running the Java 4 and you are ex you are expecting Java 8 for applications. Like a version issue. Permission issues. And here logs also you should check this. Are you understanding all of you? Hello? Yeah, I have a question. So yes. let's yeah, let's say you have an application error, right? And you jump mm -hmm. on the server, you jump on the server, and on the server side everything is looking good. What is the next alternative? Where would I go? To That's what go? I said. You look at the first, read the error. What is the error? And divide into the category. What kind of error? Is the system, application, runtime, or dependent services? And then based on your gut feeling, let's say you decided okay, it's a system error. Then run these commands for that which I showed you and then see that where you can fix or applications or runtime. So you have to trace to the error, find out the root cause and then fix it. Okay, I'm teaching you how to how to trace the error. Getting over once. So while running the errors for the runtime, you should check the permission of applications, version of applications, logs of applications, and all stuff like that. Once you are done with it, once you are done with the runtime, okay, I'm not asking you to go a deep dive. I'm just giving you a clue actually in your, for your memory. Now then dependent services. Dependent services means sometime dependent services like LDAP services, okay, or sometime like third party, third party tool, which you are using in your Okay, third party tool, dependent services. Okay, maybe uh, mail server, maybe Q server. Okay, Q spelling is correct, right? Q U U Q correct. I think it's not correct. I always forget this word actually. Ha. Huh. So Q. So LDAP, you may have a some error. Third party tools, if you have integrations, mail server you have, queue server we have, notification servers you have, maybe uh, chat server you have access, uh, integration and that error. So now first coming back to the things now, read the error five times. In your memory, in your mind, create a categorization with the system or applications or runtime or dependent services and then Start doing all this or this one or this one or this one. Are you understanding all of you the approach for troubleshooting? Yes, sir. Yeah. So for that, many commands are there. Like some of the commands I run, but you have to run many other commands. Networking commands, you have ping, netstat, trace rt, if config, ip config. Uh, you know, many commands are there which you have to permission ch mode ch own disk du duf and ram free uh, vm state. Many commands are there cpu top and all for checking the Java applications whether this version is correct or not. Permission is running this. These all applications are running accessible library issues. Like library issues are a lot actually. Library issues are a lot. For example, I'll tell you Python program you're running. Okay. And that module itself is not there, library. So your code is failing. Or maybe Java issue, same case, library issues a lot. Tomcat, maybe you are some having some permission with the uh, routing. You need to understand the Tomcat a better way. Or Apache. Okay, so permission, version, logs, library. Look at the logs of apps. Okay, dependent services again, it's like many things depends on LDAP server. Last day I was troubleshooting one error 
last night uh, the moment in a jenkins they have a, attached to the ldap server and the moment ldap server the jenkins get started uh, so ldap server the account that get blocked so we realize okay there's too many try happened by the jenkins to the ldap servers too many try it happens in a in a short span of time so ldap to get blocked so we had to change the configuration with ldap server admin saying that we this is the behavior which we are getting can you can you increase the retry uh, for the for this particular account or something like that so he did something and then solve the issues so many issues you may have it depends on the scope of it so guys this is a uh, something which you cannot get it in one day you have to practice it in your mind and commands you can get it if you know what commands you are looking for it so this is one now one more thing i would like to show you which is called linux structure so many of you must be comfortable with the linux structure but if not then understand this uh, ls root look at the, these are the directory which you have now it's very simple way i'll tell you uh, any configuration related things for the system for the linux machine you will find under the etc where is etc uh, it should be somewhere here it is any anything so you go and etc you will see every configuration of the system is find you find in etc for example users group services so basically this is a great place to learn entire system actually host host name configuration see that apt configurations here you have you know services init.d do you see init.d init.d uh, i i i here it is init.d all the services file will be created here by default look look at the network related configurations os patching related configurations okay should words related configurations now i used it right here securities sc linux and all related configurations some of the cron cron related configuration so here whatever i'm i'm showing you this directory is very important for you the more you get comfortable with this directory all the file system will be easy for you okay these are the check config check configuration that means when you start the boot then whatever the things should be loaded python related configuration profiles also you have etc profile where you can set the users profile default user profile for each user so this directory is important get comfortable slowly okay each files will have some significant for some changes and slowly if you want to set some environment variable for entire system this file you can use okay so this is the stuff now another one which you see that here that is ls root just a second host clear the screen here is home home basically is a directory where all the users home will be located like i have a two users right see ubuntu and vagrant now you say rajesh is a user which home is not created so you know the user i created but for that user i did not set the home actually so how do i see that so more etc password this is a place where you have a grep vagrant vagrant here i did not set the home for that guy you have to set it up while creating user you see here home directory is set but if you see the rajesh i did not set you can modify the users set the home actually so here home is set but it's not created not sure why uh it should have been created i see that set is there so let's do one thing let me go to rajesh okay i logged in using rajesh and yes it says okay that's okay and i'll go to ha ah, so there's a problem so see here cd it will take you to home no such file and directory so you can populate actually repopulate using manually through the manually also you can do that create this directory 
but through command and all command and also you can correct it. the command i am not able to recall that uh linux user so so what to do so oh, this is the wrong page this is the wrong entry actually okay just a second user mod mod means modification with user home directory creation directory creations this is the right url so here it is and username is this is the command manually also you can do that manually. you have to done rajesh 123 cd now is created so here you have okay so hell lot of commands are there manually also you can do that but this command will help you so i was doing something which was linux structure yeah so here ls okay so here you have home all the executable which you find you find under the user bin okay this is the directory you will find so how do you see that echo dollar path and you see that which is set these are the places you will find all the executables so user local s bin user local bin user s bin user bin s bin bin directory also user games also user local games and also so these are the places all the executables will find it okay so if you want to add your own path to this place how to do that let's say i go to the opt okay so sudo i'll just do that because opt you cannot write using normal user so here uh, here i'll go for cd opt and here i'll create one directory uh, tools okay and this is the tool directory i want to add this this tools into the path so how do you do that export path is equal to dollar path and append this opt for tools and now env see here is got added here okay env is a command or echo also dollar path see here opt tool is added so yeah the directory structure is very important for you to understand uh, all the temporary things you see here you inside the temporary file you can delete this file blindly if if you're not storing some important okay important file so here opt file typically is a place where we install the custom applications and you can install in any uh, any other place also but manually if you're installing then you can go for opt tmp for the temporary files and all this thing but these are the libraries for the operating system so right that's not it any mount you create it will be having here the reference and stuff like that so guys, are you understanding this structure, all of you? Yes. Okay. So now we'll spend some time with the user questions. That means all of your questions. So feel free to ask any questions and I will answer those questions through the demo. So go ahead. Any questions if you have in Linux, uh, please get it resolved with my help. All of you. Uh, Rajesh, I have one question. So like while using the VI editor, so like mm -hmm. once we edit uh, the particular notes, so like how to save it? And if we want to delete it all together, what is the command that needs to be used? Yeah. So yeah, I wanted you to uh, understand this VI editor. 
offline but because you have asked me so i'm just explaining you so understand that vi editor is very simple to understand for the sake of not vi editor vi nano vim all are working in the same concept so first you open up then any files you open up with the vi editor for the sake of then you'll be having the read only mode okay then if you want to edit then you have to bring in the insert mode which you call mode insert mode okay so edit mode how can we come so by default read mode the moment you open up file then you get in the read mode insert mode for that you have to press i i means insert mode and after that you can do whatever insert you want manually there's automation also i don't want to confuse you right now but after that you have to go to read only mode after that you want to save the files and the read only mode you have to go and then only you can save the files or quit the files so in cert mode you cannot do the saving you cannot do the saving and exiting so let me show you here so if i go to here there is a one file which i am creating right now vi raju.txt okay this file i am modifying it and the moment i open up now this file is if you look at it carefully this is in the read only mode now how do i make it in the insert mode so press i look at the bottom section see this is a insert mode skip read only mode i insert mode skip read only uh, read only mode i <coughs> insert mode so here if you want to transfer to the read only mode escape press escape button so so far clear right now hello yes sir now do whatever you want you want to do insert do write anything but uh, there's so many shortcuts are also there i want you to practice it okay lots of shortcuts are there so i edited this file now in order to save or quit i have to go to the read only mode now after the read only mode colon is a way to notify what to do so if you do the colon q and if you do the colon w q so q means save uh, sorry exit without saving and here exit oh, sorry without right yeah without saving and exit with saving so if you run this in the read only mode colon wq then it'll be working so like that here if i see i go to the escape read only mode colon q and exclamations enter see that file is not created now I'll, again i'll do this insert mode i am doing faster so i did not explain it to you escape mode and colon wq wq means save and exit and you see this file got created you want to modify this file again same thing you i for insert and escape read only wq and done. and you can see this file using more and cat commands like this understood so this is a fundamental okay i told you fundamental but there are so many shortcuts so many combination of commands you have to practice it okay i think uh, he asked you how to delete and uh and vi yeah yeah so let's say if you want to delete so first thing there's a one way let's say this is the file and you want to delete so go to the insert mode and delete whatever you want through the keyword okay this is a, like a tedious work but you know if you go in the read only mode there's so many shortcuts like a dd dd will delete second line so i am not my cursor is on the second right line right see dd you want to go to the end of the file like this and insert mode also activated so many shortcuts are there which i am trying to tell you you have to practice it so that way it will help you whole file you can delete you can append you can insert many shortcuts are there got it yeah who's going to ask me another questions
more questions guys I have, a, I have a question about it. it's it's in regards to the um the variant. I don't know if you can like go over it again if you don't mind. Yeah. Tell me. Yeah, tell me. Any specific questions, guys? Anyone have? Okay. No. Okay. So now this is the line X. You have to practice it and First uh, step you have to do, you know, create a VMs. How do you create a VM using VM virtual box? After that, you create a VM using Vagrant. After that, you start working Linux command. You just access the Linux box using n number of ways. And after that, you practice all these commands, which I talked about it. And then some of the references here and uh, so on then also we understand the ch mode concept or missions also we understand that how to troubleshoot and some of the file system of the things so now last one which i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to here uh, shut down this vm uh, vagrant so vagrant Halt. So I'll come out of it actually. Exit, 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 last exit. So this is the VM which I was using. And after the using, you should never forget to halt. Other real, other your system uh, will be corrupted. Okay, other your system will be corrupted. So vagrant. and halt okay And finally, destroy. Destroy means this VM will lose that. Okay, so you lose this VM, which I created under July Ubuntu. Yes. Done. So never forget to uh, stop the VM at least, otherwise your system will be having trouble and get quick. So you look at my environment, what I did by looking at my environment, probably you will have some visualization. So I've created so many VMs actually, one for DDDog, one for Tomcat, one for Neurally, one for Dynatrace, one for Puppet, one for Splunk. So whichever I need it, I immediately just clone it and create it and start working on it. Have I set up everything? I don't run all the VM at a time because I don't need it all at a time. I have a 16 GB RAM, so two VMs I can easily keep on running parallel uh, with a 3 GB RAM or something like that. But if it is a, 1 GB RAM and 2 GB RAM, I can run 4 5 also. So, yeah, this is the stuff. Anyone have any questions? All of you?